So look at that. <coughs> that has got a lovely kick to it. Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Cuisine TV where we quiz the cuisine. Now, situation has changed. London, tier four lockdown, things are closing. We're struggling uh, to mix with our household. So we at Cuisine have had to innovate. And so today I'm gonna to be doing something completely different. I'm gonna be doing it alone, unfortunately. Partner in crime, Naeem, is somewhere else. But today, I am gonna be turning into a chef and I'm gonna be cooking you some food. That's right, today, the beloved cuisine boy turns into chef cuisine boy. So trusty apron goes on. What am I making today? Well, I've decided I'm basically gonna go through some of the incredible cuisines we've had throughout the last few weeks on our expedition to find amazing food and I'm gonna try and replicate it at home. So today, I'm gonna to be making Somali food at home. That's right. You all remember that incredible baris and halid that we had. It was to die for. Everyone loved it. I recommended it to so many of my friends afterwards. So today I'm gonna to make it at home. I'm gonna make Somali food at home. So I'm gonna make baris and halid. So I'm gonna, the meat I'm gonna use is beef and chicken. And then I'm gonna make the rice. But on the side, I'm also gonna make their special green chili sauce that we tried as well. So this is gonna be fun. It can go completely wrong. I might mess it up and the food might taste atrocious, but we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna see what we can pull off and you guys are gonna come on the journey with me and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So there's obviously two parts to this meal. There's the meat and then there's the rice. Meat wise, we're using beef and chicken. Uh, and then obviously we need to make that lovely, fluffy, aromatic Somali rice. So we're gonna get four cups of basmati rice here. You're gonna wash it thoroughly and then you're gonna leave it to soak for at least one hour. And then we're gonna go on to making the amazing Somali hawash spice mix. Now this is the key ingredient in Somali food. They absolutely love the hawash spice. It's basically like garam masala in the subcontinent and it's a mix of all these brilliant things. So we've got black peppercorn, we've got cinnamon, we've got cardamom, we've got coriander seeds, we've got cloves and we've got turmeric. Now, all of those things are effectively gonna be mixed together and grinded until they become a powder, and that's gonna make the hawash. So, first things first, let's put some of those beautiful coriander seeds in there. There we go. And it's important to keep the heat really, really low for this because we don't actually wanna overdo the spices. It's much better to underdo them than to overdo them. Next is the cardamom uh, and effectively you just toast them until you start getting that beautiful aroma and that beautiful smell. Cloves in next and we put in the black peppercorns and then we put in the cinnamon stick. Cinnamon stick goes in and there's effectively those five ingredients. The turmeric is the sixth ingredient but this actually goes in a bit later. We don't actually toast this because it's already in the form of powder. Um, so yeah, we just let this toast for a little while until it starts to smell nice. And then give it a bit of a mix because all of this is now going to formulate. It's all going to fuse into one genius, genius spice mix. So effectively, you just want to keep lightly toasting this until it gets nice and fragrant. You should start being able to really smell those flavors. They're all coming through, smell those wonderful scents and aromas. Keep mixing it so it doesn't you know, burn and stick to the pan as well. Uh, we're gonna do that for a few minutes and then we're gonna blend. Okay, so we've toasted our spices. Now we're gonna blend them and formulate that incredible hawash spice mixture. So what we're gonna do is grab our 
glass. We are going to pour everything. Up. You have to make sure after you've toasted this to let it cool down, by the way, for a few minutes. You don't want it to be too hot. So now it's nice and cool. Okay. So that's our spatula in. Now we are going to put this on the blend. Screw that up nice and tight. Great. Let's clip that in. And we blend away. So we've got our hawash powder. The last ingredient to make it whole is that little bit of turmeric which we need to add. So what we're going to do is mix this. I don't want to put the turmeric in my blender because then I'm going to get a yellow blender but I'm just going to mix them all. Put them all in the bowl like so. Okay. And you mix. Just mix them up. And that's the first part done. We've got our hard spice. Now let's move on to the meat. So we've always got beef here and we've got chicken here. Um, I'm using around a kilo of beef in two medium to big size chicken breasts. Uh, but I will outline all the uh, ingredients and the content of the ingredients below in the description so you'll be able to catch it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to slice and dice some of this meat. Um, because the way we had it in Brothers Restaurant when we went to Tottenham uh, is obviously in those thin slices. Um, and it just, it was nice because it allowed the meat to cook through quite well because it's so thinly cut and I imagine it's quick to cook as well. So I'm just going to cut these into thin slices um, and effectively what we're going to do is marinate each individual slice um, and then bung them on a pan and cook them for a few minutes. So you want to keep it nice and thin, like so, almost like a mini steak. There we go. So you've got your little bits of meat steak, and now we are effectively going to marinate them in the amazing uh, spice mixture that we've just made. Right, so our meat's there. Now we want to add uh, about two tablespoons of oil to the whole thing like so um, and then we've also got some uh, this is crushed garlic and ginger paste frozen into little cubes I've just melted it down in the microwave uh, we're gonna bung this on as well oh careful gonna bung this on uh, we're gonna do add some this is curry powder um, something that's quite popular in the sort of meat mix for the Somalis. So I'm adding about a teaspoon. I'm just using a tablespoon to do it. Finally, of course, well, not finally, we've got a few more things to add, but almost finally is that amazing hawash mixture. So let's get a good amount of that in. Don't be shy with this baby. And then we're gonna add some salt uh, and you can add a little bit of pepper as well. Obviously, don't be careful not to put too much salt in. You're going to end up ruining it, ruining all your hard work. And I'm going to put some black pepper in as well because I absolutely love pepper. About a um, teaspoon of that. All right, now we're ready. You don't want to see this, but the hand's about to get dirty. You just allow all of this good stuff to marinate, put it aside for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, but that's that done. Um, now, gonna work on the chicken. And effectively, we're gonna do the same thing with the chicken together. So we've got our chicken now, and we've also got our beef. Put it to one side, let it marinate for about half an hour. Obviously, the longer you let it marinate, the nicer it will taste. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our rice. So, I told you earlier, you wanna soak, wash and soak some basmati rice for about an hour. Uh, we've done that. And then you wanna basically restock up on the water within the rice. Um, we've used four cups of rice. You wanna use about six cups of water to that rice. 
maybe seven. Um, it's always better to add a little bit less water and then you can add more as you're cooking just so you don't overdo it and end up with really, really mushy rice. So this is our uh, soaked rice. We're gonna transfer this into our chosen device, which we're gonna be cooking our rice in. Transfer that all in. We're gonna keep the water in, remember. We don't drain it completely like you do with other forms of rice. And what makes this rice really distinct? It contains some stock as well. The Somalis cook their rice with stock, which just really amplifies the taste and the flavor so in this case we're going to add some vegetable stock to the rice um, and basically what you want to do is really put those bits of stock in water uh, and you want to allow for the stock to dissolve get that bit of stock in and you want to just plump it in with a little bit of water and this will slowly dissolve and you end up with this yellowish water. If you want, you can speed up the process by bunging this in the microwave for a bit. Okay, so we've got our vegetable stock now, which has dissolved in water. And we're literally just going to add that into the rice. Lovely jovely. And you're gonna see that really adds such a wonderful flavor to the rice. Um, and then we're gonna add a little bit of oil, about three tablespoons worth, maybe two. I'm just gonna add a little bit. And then we're basically just gonna put it on the stove, medium heat, and we're gonna cook it for about 10, 12 minutes. And that should do the trick. Okay, so now we're gonna put our rice on the stove. For the first five minutes or so, we're gonna blast it full power heat. Um, and that's basically gonna allow for the water to boil, so as high as you can. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna put the fire down to a more sort of medium lower heat and cook for another five minutes. And that will ensure we get the perfect fluffy texture in our rice. So the water is very much boiling now. Uh, it's been about five minutes. We're gonna now transfer the rice onto a medium lesser heat uh, and let it cook for about another five minutes. So I'm just gonna move this along here. Let's bung this on the medium heat. Here we are. And now we're going to start cooking our meat. Okay, so while the rice is cooking, we're just going to start uh, cooking our beef. Uh, so you've, we've let it marinate for around half an hour now. We're just going to bung it in. And these are quite thinly sliced, so they hopefully shouldn't take too long to cook. And then we'll do the same with the chicken. So, onto our hot pan goes our beef. Now we have oiled this up from before, so no need to add any more oil to the pan. Just get the beef on there. As many as you can fit on really. Let that cook. And we are going to cover this a little bit because we want the beef to kind of retain that moisture. It will start sort of getting a little bit watery as well. There is a little bit of kind of moisture associated with the meat when you have it Somali style. So I want to keep that. So I will put a lid on it at some point. We've now cooked our steak, our meat. We've cooked our meat. Just look at that. As I mentioned, there'll be sauces there. You can see lovely bits of sauce, which we're gonna drizzle all over our rice and it's gonna be delicious. So our meat's done. Now we are moving on to that incredible chicken. And it's the same process really. Cook the chicken all the way through for a few minutes and uh, soon enough we'll be ready to eat. So into a hot pan goes that chicken. Listen to the sizzle. Absolutely love that. The aroma is so, so beautiful. All those spices, the smells are so gorgeous and they're all coming through. A lot of black pepper in there as well, so it's making me want to sneeze a little bit. We're gonna let that chicken cook for a few minutes, either side, and then we're gonna be ready. All right guys, so we're just finishing up with our sort of condiments that we're gonna have on the side of the rice. It's just potatoes, some onions, a little bit of bell peppers, and we're just gonna serve that up with the rice because that's what they did in our Somali adventure when we had it. 
So you can see here, very straightforward. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of seasoning to that because right now I've just chopped it all up, put it in the pan. I put a little bit of seasoning in. By seasoning, I mean just salt and pepper, um, just to bring out the sort of flavor. Pepper, just to bring out the natural flavors of that. When I took my friends to brothers, it's the little things that they picked up on. It's the fact that there's, you know, some onions and potatoes on the side just takes everything up a notch. So we're gonna let that just cook for a little bit longer. It's almost done. Right, so while we just wait for the finishing touches for our little condiments on the side, we're gonna make the chili Somali sauce. This is amazing. It's called the Baspa sauce. And this is basically coriander with some coconut. Uh, and it's basically made into a lovely sauce that goes so well with the meat. Uh, and with the rice. We had this in Brothers, uh, we tried it and we absolutely loved it. So we're just gonna make it really quickly while we wait for the final things uh, to get ready. So effectively, all you're gonna do is chuck a bunch of things into the food processor. Here we've got coriander uh, and we've got some mint. We've got a little bit of lemon and we've got some green chili. And that is basically where the kick's gonna come from. Literally gonna chuck all of those things into the food processor. Here we go. Uh, and then that key ingredient that really separates this sauce from its competition is the coconut. So it's always good to use fresh coconut. Here we're using coconut oil because uh, we couldn't find fresh coconut. But just pop that in. It really thickens the sauce, makes it so much more delicious. Uh, and then you might need to add a little bit of water in there just to get the blitzing going. Don't add too much, you don't want it to be too runny. We want to make sure it's the perfect consistency. Let's close that up, and here we go. Come on, we're getting there, we're getting there. So we we'll just transfer that to a bowl. Wonderful that color is. That's really, really gorgeous. Right, so that's it. All the condiments, the rice, the meat, everything is ready and prepared. We are now going to do the most enjoyable part of the entire process. We are going to plate up, ladies and gentlemen. Just look at that. Baris and Halib at home, ladies and gentlemen. Somali food concocted in the comfort of our own home during this awful COVID lockdown period. Who says you can't replicate brilliant food at home? Just look at that. Oh yeah. A little bit of sauce. I'm gonna pop that on the side here. Let's get the banana ready. I'm gonna have a bite of banana with my food. Knife and fork. I'm gonna get a bit of meat. A little bit of sauce. Here we go. Banana. Mm. Oh my God. That is delicious. I don't know which idiot came up with the saying, never eat your own cooking. That idiot was wrong. My cooking is amazing. I think I've done a very good job here. Almost as good as Brothers itself, dare I say it. I'm gonna try a little bit of chicken now. Taste for the banana. Oh my God. That chicken is cooked perfectly. It's so moist, it's so juicy. The hawash flavor's coming through with every bite. It's got a really good kick to it. That banana, actually, and the sultanas add such a lovely bit of sweetness to the dish. Rounds it all off perfectly. Oh man, this is incredible. God bless Somalia. Thank you, Somalia, for your cuisine. This is incredible. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Baris and Halib, Somali style, made at home. Try yourself, make this at home. I'm gonna put all the recipes and the ingredients in the description below so you can try 
having a go at this amazing national favorite in Somalia. But that's it for our episode today. Uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment below actually on this video. Have I absolutely butchered the traditional uh, Baris and Halib? Have I done a good job? We've got a few Somali subscribers. Let me know what you guys think and let me know if you want to see us do more of this kind of content in the weeks to come. Make sure to subscribe. I'm out. I'm going to enjoy this. Bye.